Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the piece by the artist Alex Gray. And Gray is an artist working across a bunch of different mediums from painting to performance art, sculpture, everything in between. He does a lot of work in pioneering and really popularizing the movement of visionary art. In this episode, we're going to talk to you a little bit about intimate portraiture. We're going to talk about the profound power of a positive internet. And then we're going to talk about a divine a titan of the divine realm of visionary art. So let's jump right into it. So whenever you first see this work, you know, you're caught face to face with this lone subject here. And, you know, it's impossible to miss. The face of our subject commands the center region of the spatial composition. So, of course, that really results in a very kind of confrontational one-on-one -on -one visual experience. And... Of course, we see our subject in the traditional format of, of a portraiture here, but everything else of this work is not traditional. It's very, you know, colorful. There's a lot of light, a lot of energy within this work, but that is set with the main portraiture format, of course, seen from the shoulders up there. The result of that, like I said, it's a really confrontational visual, visual experience, but it's also a very intimate one as well. This might even be creepy to some people. Of course, it's very uh, translucent and there's a lot going on within this work. But there's no doubt that the portraiture format really creates an intimate and kind of one-on-one -on -one visual experience there. And so in this work, we see a ton of light. And this light really permeates almost every pixel of the spatial composition. Of course, it glows with that kind of radiating aura around our, around our subject. And, you know, in this work, just the incredible amount of light, it really in invigorates the visual experience for the viewer. It creates a very energetic work whenever you see this work right in front of you. And so I also want to talk a little bit about the internet here because this piece is really based on the evolution of the human alongside the internet, but also the profound potential of a positive internet. And so the internet, of course, it's changed our lives so much. Um, over the past really kind of 25 to 30 years, we've seen exponential rates of growth and technological innovation and just growth in general. So it's been absolutely amazing. And what's what's clear is that the internet is a very kind of complex system. And and this piece is actually inspired by an idea of the new sphere. And what the new sphere is, NOO sphere, is actually the kind of macro layer that goes even greater than humans. So when humans work together, you know, we can create complex ecosystems, we can create companies, we can create um, even the internet itself. And so the internet is quite interesting because whenever you're sitting down at a computer, you can see the internet, but... It's not, it's not kind of tangible in the way that it is a physical object. The, the screens are portals into this realm, and it's cr pretty interesting because, you know, the, the information is almost invisible. It almost takes up no space. So with that in mind, we can think of that as the kind of information layer of, the, of, of our world. So the new sphere can be thought of as kind of a, a decentralized group of individuals which all contribute to the to the growth and development of this layer. And so, for example, I believe Terence McKenna once said that the profound power of the internet is the fact that we can all direct our attention towards one problem and kind of all come together and solve it simultaneously. And so, within this work, you know, the internet has the internet has had the per, per, profound potential and of course it's already proven this potential to catalyze human evolution in both positive and negative ways in negative ways you know we see people can waste time on the internet people can kind of get in pointless arguments people can look at kind of negative stuff so there is negative stuff on the internet but there's also a lot of uh, profound positive potential for example the vast amount of information on the internet being able to connect with kind of old friends, being connect connect with anyone at any time across the globe, and then even say like your loved members, your your loved your loved ones or family members have passed away, you can look back at the things they've said, and it's almost as if um, their presence is there in a way. So I think that's really interesting, and it's important to note that the internet is not only good or only bad. It is both. And it is it is how the person surfs the internet. It is how the person uses that technology that really defines how it impacts them. And it really defines how it kind of helps us grow as a species as a whole. And so in the work, you, you know, you see this kind of, you see this display of both the material 
and the metaphysical states of being. So we see the physical and the metaphysical. And so what I mean by that is, of course, you see a very translucent subject. You see all of these veins, these bones, everything going on within the subject. That really emphasizes the the physical or the quite literal kind of body or soul of our of our subject here. And then on the other hand, you see the metaphysical states of being mainly through the aura and then this incredible light that just permeates every part of our subject's form here. And so you know, both of those bring each other into alignment. You know, you have this light which goes across the subject and then you also have the translucent, much more material, physical body there as well. And so those are both in complete harmony, complete alignment, and they both really kind of work together in the spirit of the digital genesis. And one thing I forgot to mention is you see this kind of computer chip backing here and in the in the realm of the internet, I think that's quite important because we almost have like a globally unified internet at this point because there's kind of like a global culture of the people who, who go on the internet. And it's pretty interesting in the way that, that it connects people. And I think that this computer chip backing may be in mimicry of that kind of interconnected nature of this globally, globally unified internet culture. And so moving on, we see the, the divine realm of visionary art is incredibly important. Visionary art is meant to kind of represent the physical or, or the, the, the spiritual or metaphysical states of being in a kind of concrete visual experience. And one of the most popular artists who's really popularized, one of the most well-known artists who's really popularized this movement is that of Alex Gray. And of course, that was alongside the profound rise of awareness of psychedelics, for example. And all of those have really played a profound potential in the success of Alex Gray, just his his continued rise in notoriety and influence as well. And so I brought uh, t two of some of his other works that we've showcased here before. I'm going to size this down just a little bit. There we go. So, of course, we see today's piece here. And in these three works, one of the most common things you'll see is kind of a radiating energy, an emphasis on the physical, but also an emphasis on the metaphysical. Of course, you see all the veins here. You see the veins there as well, translucent body. And then here, even the hummingbird as well, you can also see the physical kind of attributes and physical elements of that subject as well. And so in these works as well, you see an incredible display of light in each one. Of course, in this, you kind of have this radiating fire of the divine natural world. In here, you have that radiating aura around the subject, kind of the soul of our subject. And then you also see that radiating aura here as well. And then you see, of course, this is the logo for MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. And so... You know, you see an incredible amount of light within this work. Of course, the physical as well as the metaphysical, the physical as well as the metaphysical, and then the physical as well as the metaphysical. And so with that visionary art, those all really work together to create a divine, a very spiritual and kind of metaphysical visual experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. A lot of people like Alex Gray's art. He is a priceless, priceless artist who has a profound impact on psychedelics as well as the world of visionary art and just artists as a whole really rediscovering their creative spirit because you know he has been doing this for a very long time we're talking decades and decades and decades of complete dedication to his craft and so you know we're really blessed to study this work today and i hope you guys enjoy it i know some people might find this work a little creepy but um, I think it's really important whenever we're talking about evolution alongside the internet. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Go check out Alex Gray's other works. Like I said, he's doing a bunch of different stuff. Really, really good stuff coming from this artist. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. My name is Apollo. This was Apollo Art Analysis, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. Apollo Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.